Okay, let me show you guys a really nice result when we want to do the Laplace transform of f of t star g of t. And this right here is the convolution. And by the way, if this is just a regular multiplication, there's no good result at all, right? But for convolution, yes, there is. But however, how can we get that though? Well, why don't we just go back to the fundamental? Namely, let's go ahead and use the definition of Laplace first, yeah? So, by the definition of Laplace transform, we know this is going to be the integral from 0 to infinity, and we have to have that e to the negative st, and then we have to put this in here, right? But what is the convolution? As we know, convolution is also integral, isn't it? The definition of the convolution, let me just put that down right here, it's the integral from 0 to t f of t minus v times g of v, and this right here is just regular multiplication, all right? And inside here, we have to integrate it with respect to v first. And then let me just put a parenthesis around this, because we have to remember to put down vt at the end for the definition of the Laplace transform. Okay, we are kind of making progress, but now, and yes, if you guys notice, we have an integral inside of another integral, Yes, this is the double integral, just like your good old calculus 3, isn't it? How can we take up this, though? Well, let's think about a few things. First of all, the limit of this integral is going from 0 to t, but this one is going from 0 to infinity. And this is a variable t, right? So I cannot do too much about this. It would be much better if this integral is also going from 0 to infinity, so that I can just change the order of integration if necessary, right? Maybe that's a good idea. And another thing I notice is that right here I have the f of t minus v, t minus something. This kind of reminds me of what we have done in the previous section, right? With the unit step function. Because remember, whenever we have the unit step function, we have to have that u of t minus a, t minus whatever, right? So that kind of, you know, kind of suspicious. Hmm. Maybe we can utilize the unit step function and somehow make it so that this integral can also become from 0 to infinity instead. How can we make that happen? Well, let's check this out. First of all, let's go ahead and interpret this integral as the area under the curve. So this right here is saying we have this function here, right here, right? In the phi world. And let me just draw this right here for you guys. So this horizontal axis is the phi. Okay, and let me just say this right here has the graph that looks like this. I don't know how it looks like, but you know, just for illustration purpose. And we have this function. Let me just label that. This is f of t minus v times g of v. And once again, in this world, in the phi world, t is just a constant. V is the independent variable. Okay, and you see this integral is going from 0 to t. So I will just mark this right here for you guys, 0 to t, like that, right? And we are trying to just calculate this area for that, isn't it? Well, this is just from 0 to t. But as I mentioned earlier, I want to go from 0 to infinity instead. If I can somehow come with a function so that it only represents this piece only, and <laughs> I can just go ahead and integrate from 0 to infinity, right? And check this out. This is how we use to utilize the unit step function. And by the way, I know we have a lot of variables on the board already. So to make things slightly clearer, let me just use this to be, let's say, you know, let's say 3, right? just for illustration purpose. And I'm going to change that back to you guys very soon, right? And I'll also actually change this to red, so it will be slightly better. So keep in mind, this 3 is just the t value that I pick for now, all right? Okay, so I have a first option for you guys. So let me draw this again. So I shall draw it right here. You guys can still see. So the function still looks like this. And this is still f of t minus v, g of v. Nothing changed, right? And let me just mark. This is 0, and this is my 3. All right, and now, just like the previous section, imagine if I take this and multiply by u, and remember, 
the independent variable that we're using is phi. So let's talk about if I multiply this by u of phi minus a number. And you know what that number is. I want to just talk about 3. So let's say phi minus 3. How does the graph of this look like? Well, 3 is the number right here. And this is phi minus 3. That means anything before 3, it will become 0, like this. And then at 3, you have the open circle. And then anything afterward, you take the original function like that. Right? But this right here has nothing to do with the original because I want to have this area for this, isn't it? I don't want to kill from 0 to 3. I want to have 0 to 3. So what can I do in that case? The problem is I multiply u of phi minus 3. Why don't I switch that? So let me show you this right here. So once again, let's look at this is the phi axis, and then I still have the same graph. This is still f of t minus phi times g of phi. Now I will multiply this function by u of 3 minus phi. When I do that, right here this is still my 0, and let's say this is still my 3. Notice that I just flip this input, right? And technically what I'm doing is multiply by negative 1 for the input. In that case, you will be taking the front part, anything before 3, to take that. When it is 3, you put the open circle, and anything after 3 becomes 0. This is what will this unit step function do to that graph, alright? And now you see why I use 3. I don't want 3, I want t. So what I want to do is, let me erase this to be t, right? So I come back here. This is not 3, I want t. So I'll put on t right here. So this right here is technically my t. But you see, it was confusing, right? That's why I used the 3 earlier. Now I will erase this to be t. And then I will erase the 3 to be t, isn't it? Right? So, what I want to do to that blue integral is that I will multiply this u of t minus v so that I can integrate this thing by instead of from 0 to t, I can integrate that thing from 0 to infinity because anything after t will be just 0 anyway, so the area stays the same. Right now, let me just come back here and write this down for you guys. I still have this integral from 0 to infinity e to the negative s t, right? And I will do this uh, in detail for you guys. First of all, let me put on a blue integral sign. And let me not put on any <laughs> limits yet. Let me just write down the inside. f of t minus v, g of v, like this. But as I mentioned earlier, I will take this part and multiply it by u of t minus v. So I can just chop this part off, right? So I can just, let me just put this down, u of t minus v. And I will just close this integral by putting a dv. And once I have this right here, I can legitimately say I can go ahead and integrate from 0 to infinity. Once again, originally it was from 0 to t. It was only this much. But when you multiply by u of t minus v, which is the red curve right here, right? When you integrate from 0 to infinity, it's still the same as just this much area, isn't it? Right? So this is still legitimate. Okay? And now you see we have the 0 to infinity, 0 to infinity. And hopefully that's going to help us. And we still have that dt on the outside like that. Okay, so far, so good. Um in the phi world negative st right here, well, both the s and the t are constant, so I can invite this guy inside, right? Uh, with that being said, let's just go ahead and put this down as the integral from 0 to infinity, and then let me just put down the blue integral right here from 0 to infinity now, and let me just put this inside, and let me just write everything in blue, I would say. So we have the e to the negative st, and then f of t minus v, and then g of v, and then u of t minus v, and then the d v, and this right here, and then we have the d t like that. Right now, 
perhaps we want to switch the limits of integration, maybe we want to do that, huh? Because here's the deal. I have the phi, phi, phi in the phi world. Earlier, I was able to you know, bring this inside. But if I switch the d phi and dt, well, I can work with the t world first. And let me show you. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to change color. The blue is going to go first now, well, outside technically, from 0 to infinity like this. And then I'll focus on the t world, so it's the black integral from 0 to infinity. And you will see why. So just be patient as usual. And let me write this down in black. e to the negative st, f of t minus v, and then g of v, and then u of t minus v, and then I want to have the dt first, and then the dv later. By the way, can I just change the dv and dt? Yes, because right here, this is just from 0 to infinity, 0 to infinity, and then these functions right here, they are all continuous, right? So they are, you can always integrate this right here because we're talking about integrations. So now, no, I don't want to get into too much detail, but yes, we can, especially when we don't have any when we don't have any variables on the limit, so yeah. All right now, when we look at dt first inside, v will be the, the constant, so I can bring this out isn't it? Let me write this down one more time, right here. Uh, if you would like, you can just erase and put it outside, but I want to just write it down nicely for you guys. Anyway, this is going to be, I have that blue integral from 0 to infinity. I will bring the, D, I will bring the g of v outside. So, this is g of v, and once again, I can do that, it's because I'm in the t world now. So, g of v is just a constant, and then I'll close this with the black integral, so we have the integral from 0 to infinity, and then e to the negative st, and then this, this, that, right? So f of t minus v, and then we have the u of t minus v, and then dt, and then dv at the end, like that. Okay? And now, if you just focus on the inside, do we recognize this at all? This is the beauty when you're just focusing on the t world. You have the t right here, and here you have the t minus v, and here you have the t minus v, isn't it? Well, let me just put this on the side for you guys. I'll just put it down right here. Note. I may need more space, so let me put a note right here. When we do the Laplace transform of f of t minus something, u of t minus something, in the previous video, I do uh, minus a, minus a, right? But this time it's minus v, minus v. In the t world, v is just a constant anyway, so same thing. Let me write this down for you guys. When we have the Laplace transform of f of t minus a number, which is v in this case, times the unit step function t minus v, like this, what do we do? Well, first of all, whenever you have the unit step function, you know the outside is going to be e to the negative whatever this is especially they match, right? This right here is the V that we need, and then let's put on the S like that, right? So we must have this right here, and we multiply by the Laplace of the original F of T right here, just like that. And now we can rewrite this as the following. We can put down E and the negative, and let me write the S first, okay? And then the V right here, and for this, the Laplace of f of t, we can write this as capital F of s as the usual notation, right? And now, here is the beauty. Let me write it down for you guys here. As we can see, we still have that blue integral, right? Let's put that down first. That's equal to the blue integral from 0 to infinity, and we have g of v right here. Let's put that down, right? And if you see this part in black, this is exactly the definition of the Laplace transform of f of t minus v, u of t minus v. Isn't it? Right? So you know this is the same as that, and I will just replace the whole thing right here with e to the negative s v times f of s. Right? This is pretty much the result of this integral in black now. So I will write this down as e to the negative s v, and then we have that capital F of s, 
right? This is the same as that. And we still have that DP at the end. So let's put down the DP. And now we are back in the V world. So with that being said, you know, f of s, this right here is just going to be a constant, so we can take that to the front. And now we will have f of s all the way in the front, and we can say this is multiplying by the rest. And this is just a regular multiplication. We have the blue integral from 0 to infinity, and let me write this down first. e to the negative s v, and then g of v, and then d v. And check this out. This is the integral from 0 to infinity, and then we have the v, 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 they all match. What is this? This is just capital G of s, isn't it? In another word, you do the Laplace of the original g function. So right here, this is so pretty. We just have f of s times, this right here is just capital G of s, and that's it, right? And let me just write down the 0 slightly better right here. So what is this trying to say? Let's refer back to the original notation. When you have the Laplace transform of f of t, and you are doing the convolution with g of t, this right here, what we can do is, let's just go ahead and do the Laplace transform of f of t first. And then close that, and we multiply, you see, we multiply, this is once again just a regular multiplication, we multiply by the Laplace of the second which is the g of t. And once again, yes, right here we're using phi, but the phi is just a dummy variable. The result of this integration will be g of s, and that's pretty much the same as saying the plus of g of t. And this is the theorem statement for the convolution. All right? And before we go, I will also put down the other version of this when we have the inverse for this. All right? So if you look at the inverse version, that is when you have the inverse of two functions in the s world, right? So the inverse of plus of f of s times g of s, like this. What you are going to do is, you are just going to go ahead and do the inverse of the first, which is f of s. And when you do this, remember, you will be back to the t world, and you will be doing the convolution, right? In the t world, you do the convolution. with the second, right? The inverse Laplace of g of s. And in my opinion, this is more useful than the first one because this is really great for us to find the inverse Laplace transform. But anyway, you should definitely know both. This is one of the fun questions that I have ever done. And be sure you watch my other videos for the actual examples on how to utilize this theorem statement, and that will be so wonderful. And that's it.